Katie Sexton on the fishbowl. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Now, this is a fishbowl first because you are also a Point Park alumni. I am. Yeah, I graduated back in 2011. 2011. Wow. Well, I'm still pretty fairly a new Point Park alumni graduate. I graduated mm -hmm. this past uh, April. And, uh, okay, I'm, congrats. Thank you, thank you. And I'm now trying to pursue a uh, entrepreneurship as a fishbowl uh, co-creator, -cre CEO, and, uh, and all that jazz. <laughs> That's awesome. That sounds great. Absolutely. Well, um, I like to start off my interviews with asking my interviewees, um, what, are some, what, what got you interested in, well, I guess, theater slash film? Um, my my older sister actually uh, started doing uh, theater and acting, and um, I remember going to one of her rehearsals uh, for Annie, um, and uh, they needed somebody to pretend to be the dog, and I was like five for a rehearsal, and I was like, I could pretend to be a dog in Annie, so I did for just to step in for one of the rehearsals, and I loved it so much. I was like, people get to just pretend to be dogs? <laughs> That's amazing. I want to do this. I'm pretty good at it. Um, and so, uh, and luckily, um, I grew up in New Hampshire, and in southern New Hampshire, there's some really amazing uh, community theaters out there that really support um, and encourage children and some young adults, and uh, I was lucky to be uh, surrounded by that. And then I kind of knew early on, I was like, I have so much fun doing this. Why would I want to do anything else? I know people make careers out of this, so let me try it. So I did, and I'm doing it. <laughs> awesome. Well, I can definitely say for the record that your performance in the Toxic Avenger a musical comedy was absolutely fantastic. Um, I thought Thank the, you. you're absolutely welcome. Um, I thought the production was fabulous. Um, I actually uh, did uh, did a little bit of uh, technical theater at um, okay. CCAC, so I'm definitely familiar with the theater atmosphere, and I really like the CLO's Cabaret. Um, I think it's mm -hmm. a little more risque than, uh, I guess, your normal theater productions, and I really, really enjoyed the Toxic Avenger musical comedy. I thought the Thank ripping you. off. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Absolutely. The the ripping off of limbs, um, you know, the gore, the the crude, perverted humor, um, all right up it's my just, alley. It's just absurd. Yeah. It's just the whole thing is so absurd. Um, and it's been really fun to kind of live in that world where like everything is so highly stylized and so highly comedic and and comic book like. I mean, it's it's based on a comic book. Um, that was then made into a, a 1980s film, um, and then the musical is written based on the film, but the storyline is definitely a bit different. Um, and it's just, it's just a blast to be. We literally try to be as ridiculous as we can, um, and it works. Like the script is written so well, and it's so hysterical. It's so much fun. I, I can absolutely attest for that because uh, my major at Point Park was screenwriting, and mm, you know, okay. Yeah, hearing uh, you know the 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 hysterical lines uh, all throughout the the play, um, mm -hmm. you know, just again the crude humor, um, e even even throwing jokes at the fact that the type of play that it is and what it's based on uh, to begin with, because like my oh, area yeah. of expertise in um, in film is uh, the sci fi horror uh, genres. And Perfect. I am like probably the king of B grade knowledge of B grade movies. Um, oh my I, god! I know all of them, uh, especially the '80s and '90s. But the '80s are, are really where it's at. Um, it's and, where it's at, yeah. You mm -hmm. know, I, I've seen. Uh, I guess what did they make? Four or five uh, Toxic Avenger movies in the actual series. That that yeah. Is, I haven't seen all of them. I just saw like the very first one. Um, 
And uh, I, but I honestly, I loved it. It's so, it's much like our our show. It's so absurd. Sometimes it takes itself seriously, and then other times it literally is laughing at itself. It's so interesting, and I and I love it for that. Like it, it's so it's so weird, but it's so great. <laughs> right, right. I mean, I guess that was the thing about the '80s. I mean, it it had some really wacky um, ideas with doing various different genres of, you know, horror films. I mean, yeah. you had like the supernatural stuff, you had the monster movie stuff, you had the slasher movie stuff. I mean, it was yeah. you know, werewolves, vampires, um, zombies, you know, it was all there in the 80s. And I kind of feel bad that like we've kind of strayed a- away from you know, doing monster stuff, doing, you know, more of the yeah. B-grade fashion. I mean, you know, B-grade mm-hmm. movies are highly underrated because I kind of like B-grade movies more than A-grade movies because I think there's more originality to them. There's more... There's more artistry to them, too. I exactly. mean, like, because you don't have all these producers telling you, you know, trying to make money off of it. And it's really just, you know, people seeing how weird or how creative that they can can get with a certain storyline or a certain character and how far they how far can we go and they can go as far as they want they don't have producers breathing down their neck to like you know try and mold it into something that it's not it can just be a ridiculous or as scary as as it wants to be exactly exactly um on that topic what are some of your favorite uh b-grade movies you know i I don't watch a lot of B-grade movies, but, but the horror movies that I remember growing up that were very scary, I wouldn't consider The Fly a B-grade movie. The Fly was, was pretty... Do you, do you consider that a B-grade movie? Um, I, I, it's, it's, it's... It's more mainstream. It's, it's really, it's, it's kind of crazy, but, it, but it, it, that was more mainstream. It was more mainstream, but I would throw it in the I would throw it in the B grade mainstream movies because um, okay. David Cronenberg uh, wrote and directed it, and uh, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Cronenberg, but definitely in the 70s and 80s, that guy was out there, probably like yeah. the psychedelic, um, you know, sci-fi horror movie director. Um, he had mm-hmm. a series of movies. Um, one of them that I is probably like up there in my top favorite sci-fi horror movies of all time actually starred uh, James Woods and Debbie Harry, and it was called a mm-hmm. Video Drone. And um, oh, I heard that. Yeah, it's re- that's yeah. definitely B grade. But talk about like some wild um, concepts and yeah, even wilder like practical effects. Mm-hmm. You know what? Um, one of my, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but one of uh, my instructors at Point Park is still, still there. His name is John Amplis. He uh, was in, uh, Marvin. The, he was in Marvin. Yeah, Marvin, Marvin movie. Martin, yeah. Martin, not Marvin. Yeah, Martin. <laughs> um, and I've seen a few of those just because he was my teacher. Um, but you know what? I mean, I always think about like Hellraiser. Like I always have very graphic images from like Hellraiser growing up and how like, dark and weird and I didn't understand what was happening because I was too young and I didn't understand why everybody looked the way they did but I remember it being so scary and so weird it's interesting you bring up um, Hellraiser and being a, 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 a acting theater major um, Clive Barker uh, made his claim to fame with Hellraiser 1 and 2 and um mm-hmm. The actors that Clive Barker um, chose to uh, portray those characters, um, Doug Bradley is the guy who, who plays Pinhead, um, the signature uh-huh. uh, Cinnabite. And um, yeah. all the the main uh, actors, minus um, Kirsty's dad in the first one, are all actually um, like theater, Shakespeare, English trained um, stage mm-hmm. actors. And he wanted, that makes a, sense. yeah, he wanted a certain vision for um, those those movies in a certain style of acting. Mm-hmm. And um, Doug Bradley, um, forget who played uh, the the 
evil, you know, mom, um, right. stepmother. Uh, but all the, all those actors were theater trained, um, Shakespeare theater trained, and mm -hmm, that's why mm -hmm. they put on such a strong um, performance in Hellraiser one and two. Yeah, they're like they're like from another world. Yeah, like yeah. like style wise, and and I mean obviously in in the movie, but they their style is totally different than what's really happened, like than you know the other film actors. But yeah, it's it's a that's a powerful movie. Those movies are really. Really powerful. Definitely. Well, if you are a Pinhead fan, um, I'm not sure what you're doing this Saturday night, but at the Hollywood Theater out in Dormont, um, Doug Bradley is actually going to be making an appearance for, um, forget what movie they're showing, uh, but he's, he's going to be doing like a hosting the event and um, doing like a Halloween kickoff type thing. No way! That's crazy. That's pretty cool. I do know my my good friend Maggie Carr is obsessed with Hellraiser, so I'll definitely have to tell her about that. That's amazing. Yeah, he's he's a pretty cool guy. I've uh, I've met Doug Bradley, I guess like four times now, and uh, cool. each time he's he's a pretty cool guy to talk to. Hopefully, we'll uh, awesome. get him on the fishbowl not too long. <laughs> That's amazing. That's so great. Definitely. So, um, what is next for Katie Sexton um, as far as acting theater productions go? Um, well, so I'm right now. I'm actually living in New York City. Um, I'm I'm still I'm only in town uh, for this show. Um, okay. So I've been living in New York City for the past five years after I graduated from Point Park, um, and I've been like kind of traveling around doing different regional productions and um but what's next is I don't know <laughs> you know you and that's kind of the life of an actor you you there's a short time where you get to enjoy like okay I have a job and like don't have to worry about what's coming next but then as that job starts to run out you have to kind of go okay I need to start figuring out what's next and the goal is always to kind of jump back you know to back to back productions um I'm gonna still audition for stuff in Pittsburgh because I love it, just to see if I if I can extend my stay here at all. And then if, if that doesn't happen, then I'll go back up to New York and uh, and uh, keep trying it out up there. Awesome. Now, do you mm -hmm. do you want to try to aim more for theater productions, or do you want to try and eventually get into film? Um, I'm actually in the process of doing more, dipping my toes into more film and, and television um, because I was always kind of intimidated by it, um, but I am really starting to love it. Um, I really love uh, comedy in, in general, so um, I would love to do, I would love to do a, a funny part on a series somewhere, I think mean, that would be amazing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, well, there's also a lot of, um, things filming in Pittsburgh right now. Uh, there's uh, Mindhunter, Downward Do I think it's called Downward Dog, uh, uh, another series. And so I've been, um, I've been on set uh, just a little bit um, with Mindhunter and, and it's, or it's already been amazing just being, just being on a big professional set and seeing how tight, how tight you can, you need to run that set. And, um, but what I, I guess I'm saying is that I'm, I'm definitely still learning. Like, I'm definitely not a pro or as good at set life and uh, and how that all works and, and the acting that comes with TV and film as I am with theater. So, but I'm really excited about it. And I, I, I never really considered it until recently. So, um, so film and TV is definitely, definitely in the future. And I could do a horror movie. I love to do a horror movie. It'd be great for a film. Maybe that's in my future. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'm working on run one uh, right now, so... Uh, All right, joking. you let me know. If, I, if I'm still here, I will, uh, <laughs> you let me know. Well, I have your phone number, so hopefully it won't change in between now and then. And I, I No, can... I've, I've had it for years. <laughs> you know what, I've had the same phone number, cell phone number, since I was like, since I got my cell phone, so... There you go. Yeah, since I was like 14, right, the right. exact same number. Yeah, I don't think it's ever going to change. I, I don't think so either. Well, you know, I've been getting a lot <laughs> of phone calls from those 
scam artist. So we'll see. Oh, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Through them. <laughs> exactly. You know, no, yeah. nobody's, nobody's taking a piece of this fishbowl. No, that's right. <laughs> awesome. So um, now TV and film versus theater are definitely um, two very different um, atmospheres as far as mm -hmm. the acting style and how you're supposed to portray like a character on the screen. Um, would yeah. you say film and television is a little easier or would you say theater productions are a little more on, on the easy you know, side? It's such a different muscle. It's just, you're using a totally different muscle. It's like with a uh, film and TV, um, maybe you get to do a certain scene. You, you have to do a few takes of it, right? From a few different angles. Um, and that's great because you feel like, you know, if they didn't get it, you don't get it this time and like you get chances or, you know, but it's very technical with, uh, you can't move a certain way because you're going to block this certain shot or like, so it's, it's technical and it's, it's definitely a simpler, more intimate, uh, way of acting when it comes to actually connecting with, you know, the other air actors and the characters. It's a lot more intimate, um, or can be. And then with theater, I mean, like, you got one chance. If you screw up, like, every, you're so na you're naked. You're just naked on stage. If you if you screw up, everyone knows it. So it's kind of like, okay, how do you handle recovering from maybe you forgot a line or you screwed up the words? I I screwed up majorly actually a few nights ago. I got mixed up with my lines and I um I said the name J.K. Rowling twice. Because I was like saying shit about J.K. Rowling, and I, but I but I'm only supposed to say it once, and I said it twice, and I could not stop laughing, and the audience knew I screwed up, and they couldn't stop laughing. So luckily, luckily that was the moment where the audience was like, okay, with me screwing up, you know, they were like, they kind of liked it. It's like when like someone on, on like SNL breaks, and it's like hysterical right. because they're laughing, and they, you know, it, it's the acknowledgement of like they just screwed up or, or the, the situation is so funny. Um, so it's nice when you have that support of uh, the audience with you, but sometimes you don't and you have to figure out like, okay, well, here we go. Um, but it's just, uh, I just say you're just flexing a totally different muscle and you have to be very sensitive and aware um, to, to what it is that you're doing and your intention and, uh, and how, it's affecting either the audience or how it's going to be read through the camera. It's just a, it's just different techniques, but both very interesting, really, really cool. Um, but like I've done way more theater than I have TV and film, so I feel very confident in that. But, but like I said, I gotta, I'm trying to, trying to, you know, work out that new muscle, uh, figuring out TV and film, and and making sure that uh, that I don't overact. <laughs> Because I think a lot of theater actors, you're trained to be, to reach that person in the back row. So your energy and your presence has to be a little bit bigger, larger than life. Um, but on film, you have, to, you have to just chill out a little bit more um, and realize that the, the camera is right there. And that's kind of what you got to reach. Or you just have to reach that actor that's right next to you. Um, so it's just, I mean, it's just so interesting. It's just totally different. Very, I'm rambling because cool. I'm nervous about TV and film acting. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, if, if no, I'll figure, I'll figure it out. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very excited for it. Awesome. Well, I, I am excited to see where uh, Katie Sexton goes in the near future. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Thank you. I'm, I, I, I can definitely tell that definitely will have a strong future in definitely theater and I'm very excited to see um, Katie Sexton on the big screen uh, when that happens um, thank you absolutely and uh, if if you had if if you had a dream actor slash director to work with who would that be oh uh, probably 
Tom Hanks. I would love to work with Tom Hanks. Um, and who else? Let me think. Um, Oh my God, that's a tough question, or at least on the spot. But no, I mean, Tom Hanks is like, I mean, how could, who would not want to work with Tom Hanks? I think he's so good. That guy is like a, he, he can play anything. You're he always really rooting for him. He can play anything. You're always rooting for him, even when he's kind of like an evil guy. Right, he's right. Really but when he does, he's very good. But you're still like, but that's Tom Hanks. Ah, Tom Hanks, you're so good. That's just, he's amazing. He really is. Um, you know, I loved him in uh, Road to Perdition. Um, yeah. That was like the first movie I really saw him kind of go against the the genre characters that I, I've most seen him play. Right, right. No, and I think he's a fantastic actor. I think he's so good. And honestly, Jim Carrey. I know he hasn't done much of anything recently. I mean, I also really love comedy. Um, but I grew up watching Jim Carrey, and I not only think he's a great comedian, I think he's a fantastic actor, too. I think his, I, I think his best movie was Liar, Liar. I think that movie is so well done. I think he does such a good job in it. Like, I think he's so good. Everyone's like, wow, oh, he's so obnoxious. No, well, maybe he is sometimes, but... Right. I don't know. I think he's. I think. I think what he does is so good. I know he's like totally chilled out recently. He's like a Buddhist and doesn't care anymore and grew a beard and that's great right, too. Right. Have yeah, you seen? Kind of like um, that way too. Have you seen a uh, Man on the Moon? I did see Man on the Moon and I like it. I like that a lot because that's also kind of dark too. Like Andy uh, Kaufman was was a, a troubled guy. Right. So. Uh, that was that was really cool, and I think perfectly cast. Yes, um, in in my opinion, I think his greatest performance was Man on the Moon. Um, okay, totally. That, that movie is like it has it starts out like really wacky, funny, um, which is like perfect for him, and then as once you get into like the second act towards the third act, it turns into mm -hmm. a very sad movie. Um, with yeah, the really decline of, of Andy Kaufman up until his death. And, you know, I thought that it was a great film for him because it was like a dramatic comedy. And, yeah. you know, I, I remember watching um, like the behind the scenes on it when it came out. And they said that um, Jim Carrey like went into full um, method acting mode um, to I portray did, yeah. Andy Kaufman. And basically, you know, the, the wrestler guy that slapped him um, on that, on, on, during that scene in the film, um, mm -hmm. he, con he confessed um, during the, an interview when they were filming that movie that um, he actually slapped Jim Carrey um, twice as oh, hard as he slapped Andy Kaufman in real life because um, <gasps> Jim Carrey, like, just got on his nerves so much, like, wanting to be Whoa. Andy Kaufman. So that's dedication <gasps> right there. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I adore, I adore Jim Carrey. I also watched him, like, when you, in, uh, in Living Color. Yes, Growing up, I remember Color. watching old episodes of that and just being, like, who is this guy? Like, right? he is just, wow. It's just the commitment and that he just transforms and he was so funny. Yeah, I would, I would love to do a movie with Jim Carrey if he does movies anymore. I would oh, love he's, to. he's making yeah. a huge comeback. Um, I is think, he? I think, well, the last couple years, I mean, he did Dumb and Dumber 2, which was like his oh, that's right. first um, crazy character that he played in years, um, right. which was hysterical. It wasn't as funny as the first, but it was definitely hysterical. Um, and then he had that short uh, cameo in Kick-Ass 2. Um, and he had... Oh, he really? Has a, yeah, he was... Uh, what the heck was his name? Uh, 
he was like the crazy um, ex mob enforcer that his character got killed pretty early on, but he was, mm-hmm, he was like mm-hmm. the return of crazy Jim Carrey. Um, and then he, I oh, think he has good. a movie coming out at the end of this year, which is not a comedy. It's more like a drama thriller. And then I think he has a movie coming oh. out next year that I forget what it's called, but I think the basic plot scenario is that it's like a bunch of cannibals in a small Texas town. Jesus. <laughs> um, that's, that should be the return of crazy Jim Carrey. Oh my God! I can't wait. I but, cannot uh, wait. On the, on the fact that we're now getting into Halloween and still on Jim Carrey, um, I have to just tell this brief little story. Um, when I was, I've always been into Halloween. You know, thus my obsession mm-hmm. with horror and sci-fi movies. Um, but I I would come home after school uh, every every day during the week. Um, in middle school and FX at the time would have like a two hour run of in living color repeats. And I remember loving Jim Carrey on that, that show so much, especially with the crazy character that he played, uh, fire marshal Bill Baxter. And oh my God, it's the best. That was the best, best one. right? It's the best thing he's ever done. Right. It's the best thing he's ever done. Right. And yeah. I decided for Halloween one year, that I was going to go as Fire Marshal Bill Baxter. And, you okay. know, that, that show had already been canceled for like a good couple of years by the time I was doing this. Um, and I like bought the bald mat, you know, head appliance or whatever, prosthetic. And I got like, you know, a, you know, homemade outfit to kind of represent my version of Fire Marshal Bill Baxter. And, um, I was going around to all these houses, you know, trick or treating and nobody understood what I was. They all kept saying, no. are you Vester from the Adams family? And I'm like, no, oh, right. God damn it. I'm fire marshal Bill <laughs> Baxter. Don't you Don't watch you know? Living Color? I don't think a lot of people watch Living Color. I think that, I think whoever watched Living Color only watched the reruns that after they were canceled. Right. And I think that's how people know it was from the reruns, not from the, when it actually aired. That's right, right. So. But, you know. Amazing. Amazing, amazing. But now Jim Carrey is who he is, and uh, everybody knows him as Ace Ventura, and I actually talk about this with uh, my coworkers, um, because they're, like, around my age, a little older. Um and we all talk about the Jim Carrey effect, which is basically like a hundred years from now, people are going to be quoting Jim Carrey lines and not know that it's Jim Carrey who originally said it. It's going to be like the he's oh, going to be absolutely. like the Charlie Chaplin. Oh yeah, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. He's absolutely. crazy, but he's absolutely. brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I believe in that. I believe in that very much so. People are going to be talking out of their butts and they don't know why. Right, right. They'll be saying, <laughs> all righty then. <laughs> That's amazing. I totally believe that. Awesome. Well, we are just about out of time. Um, I okay. would like to thank Katie Sexton again for coming on the fishbowl and uh, talking with me for a... Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And again, a fantastic job with the Toxic Avenger and musical comedy. Um, Sarah, the blind blind librarian. uh, Yeah. Hysterical in itself. Um, But uh, Bless bless her heart. Bless her poor little heart. Right, right. But uh, yeah, thank you for coming on the show. And uh, I'm on Facebook, um, you know, Twitter, Instagram, all that. Find me, and okay, great. Uh, I will. Uh, I'll definitely let you know when the interviews uh, posted and um, all that jazz. That sounds amazing. Hey, thank you again so so much. Hope you have a great day. Absolutely, you do the same. Thanks. Bye. Bye.